love, joy, patience, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The Bible says that these are the gifts of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, patience, peace, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I'll be honest, I have struggled with some of those for years. Back when my kids were all little, I used to make my passwords for everything, uh, my Netflix account or my computer, everything. I would practice patience. <laughs> and then I would get frustrated typing it in because it was such a long password, which would remind me that I was to practice patience. Today, we're going to talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Bible is so clear about how the Holy Spirit is doing big work in our world, how the Holy Spirit is active and activating us to go do God's work in the world. Not our work, not my ministry or my work, but God's work and God's ministry in the world. Now, uh, this is a hard thing for us to take in, especially if we're new believers um, to this whole Jesus thing. In 1 Corinthians, uh, the Apostle Paul is actually writing to a group of brand new believers, and he's trying to explain to them how the gifts of the Holy Spirit work, how how to kind of tap in to this God life force, this God ruach, this God breath and wind that's all around us all the time. This is what he says to them. He says in Corinthians, he says, "Uh, Brothers and sisters, I want you to know about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know that at one time you were unbelievers. Uh, You were somehow drawn away to worship the statues of gods that couldn't even speak. But without the help of the Holy Spirit, no one could say Jesus is Lord. So he's telling them right there in the beginning that they have become to be believers because of the work of the Holy Spirit in the first place. That it wasn't even their will to be able to become believers, but it was God's will to invite them in to the community of believers. But then he keeps going. He says, uh, and there are different kinds of gifts. They all come to believers by the same spirit, but there are different ways to serve. But they all come from the same Lord. Just because you have this and you have this doesn't mean that God isn't active in both of those. And then he says, there are different ways the spirit works, but the same God is working in all the ways and all the people. And then he says this, he says, the Holy Spirit comes to us each in a special way, and that is for the good of everyone, for the good of all. There are some people who the Spirit gives a message of wisdom. To others, the same Spirit gives a message of knowledge. To others, Spirit gives faith. To others, Spirit gives gifts of healing. To others, He gives the power to do miracles. To others, He gives the ability to prophesy. To others, He gives the ability to tell the spirits apart, to discern if it's flesh or if it's spirit. To others, He gives the ability to speak in different kinds of languages that they didn't even know before. All the gifts are produced by the one and same Spirit, the gifts that He gives to each person, just as God decides. So we have gifts for a different purpose. We have different gifts from our neighbors for a different reason. And it's all so that we can work together in community. Or as Paul puts it, we can work together as the body of Christ. And what this means here is that we have two things. We have to do two things. Number one, we have to realize that these gifts, they're given to us. Not We didn't create them or make a will for them, that they come outside of us. Uh, we have to agree with God about who God has created us to be. I, put a, I heard a pastor that I really respect say it this way. He said, humility happens when you and God agree with who you are. I have a friend and I would call her what we call in these days, I would call her an empath. She's a deep, deep, beautiful feeler for people. She feels things so profoundly in the world. She's picking up on everyone's emotions and energy in every single situation. Here's the thing, she's good at it. Uh, When you're done talking with her about something, you feel better. You feel lighter because God has gifted her in this way. Uh, She kind of takes the emotions that you're experiencing and then she kind of absorbs them into her empath body. And now I have another friend who isn't like that at all. And friend, she's very, very logical. She sees things just as they are. She doesn't really get worked up about too much and, and she's not really that emotional. So not too long ago, uh, there was a tragedy, this big thing that sort of happened. And my empath friend, she works as a therapist, no surprise, but she goes and she started listening to people who experienced this tragedy. And she listened and she cared for them. And she took all that energy and emotion into her body. 
But the problem was is that then it was on her, and she was starting to feel the heavy burden of all of it. So then my other friend and I, we went and got together with her, and she took that emotion back out. And my other friend, she's not the kind of person that's going to absorb all of that. But my empath friend, she needed to unload. She needed care because she took in all the hurts, and then she needed care to be able to give up those hurts, to unburden her heart. And of course, if she didn't have someone to kind of do that with, I'm sure she would have quit therapy because it's so hard. But the truth is, is that... God created her with an incredible set of gifts to go and take in those tragedies. She also just has to rely on someone else in the body of Christ to unload some of that. So number one is that we have to agree with God about who God created us to be and how God gifted us to be. Number two, we have to submit. We have to submit to God and to each other. We have to let God use us to be able to support each other through this hard human life. And then the transverse, we have to receive the gifts that others have to give us. And and, and we know that that's hard. There's a meme out there that says the three hardest things to say uh, are, um, I need help, I was wrong, and Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> I think the first one is true, though. I think it's so hard for us in today's community and world to sit there and say, I need help. But this, when we receive help, then we're actually letting someone else use their gifts in the body of Christ for us. I think it's in this way where we're both agreeing with God on who we are and receiving the gifts of others towards us. I think that is when we're living in the spirit. And then what fruit comes from that? Well, we get love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and self-control. We get this when we do this together. It's remarkable, really, how God created us for community, how God created us differently, but for each other all at the same time. So what gifts has God given you? And what God, what, what might God be do, inviting you to use those gifts for the betterment of the world and others with? And number two, really, what gifts do you need to receive from others? And what would it be like for you to receive those gifts? I sometimes think that's the harder one. Uh, But thanks for joining me for this Holy Spirit series. I want to close one more time with uh, the Ruach of God, the Holy Spirit of God, the breath of God. So breathe with me. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen.